Good morning. Today we are going to start with our poem Ode to the West Wind, which we already had a brief idea about in the previous lecture. Uh, from the brief previous lecture, um, I suppose that you are familiar with, with the term Ode, what we mean by Ode. We said this is a kind of lyrical poem. Uh, which has the, let's say, the qualities, the characteristics of lyrical poem, but at the same time, what, what makes it different or what is the additional thing about the ode is that it is addressed to someone or something, it praises something. Uh, the poet is talking or uh, is, is talking to something or sometimes he is appraising uh, something. Here in this poem, from the title, we can guess that the poet is talking to the west wind. Uh, and the west wind, as you also remember, is the wind which blows in autumn, specifically in that time of the year. And it is in that time of the year that the poet wrote this poem. Uh, you have listened to the reading of the whole poem. Uh, and by the way, this is not the whole poem, just to be precise. Uh, here we are taking just two stanzas, the first and the last, uh, from the poem. It is somehow a long one, a long poem. So, uh, So let's see what the poem is basically talking about. So this is the first stanza. Here I want you just to pay attention that in order to see here we have the text. On the left side here, we have the text. On the right side, you have comments on the text here. How can you follow? It is based on color. Okay, so here, let's start here. All wild west wind. Thou breath of autumn's being, thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing. So from the very first line when he uh, called or let's say let's use this word apostrophize يعني بمعنى يناجي the the poet the speaker here he is talking to the wind oh wild notice here what he described the wind with wild oh wild west wind thou breath of autumn's being here he describes the uh, the wind as if it is a breath of autumn as if autumn is a, a being maybe he's a human being and the wind which blows in autumn which is the west wind is the breath of this being Okay, so the, here we have personification. You are going to see a lot of uh, personification in this poem. Thou breath of autumn's being, thou from whose unseen presence the leaves dead are driven. So what kind of uh, force the wind is? Look at this description here, unseen presence. Can you see the wind? Nobody can see the wind. Uh, the wind, what makes it fearful uh, with its power, with its influence, is that it is unseen. You can't see the wind, but at the same time, it has a very huge influence on everything around. It can destroy things, like, for example, the leaves of the trees. We all know what happened to the leaves of trees in winter, uh, sorry, in autumn. Uh, they are all dead and falling, and when they fall, down what what happens to them also the wind carries them they are driven by the wind like ghosts from an enchanter fleeing so as if the wind is an enchanter a magician and this magician is performing certain uh, let's say uh, certain movements and due to that the uh, the ghosts here ghosts uh, is a comparison between the leaves and and the ghosts. يعني يشبه ال الأوراق الأشجار بالأشباح. The way that the uh, leaves are driven in front of the wind is very similar to what happens when a magician tries to move ghosts in front of him. 
What makes the wind powerful is that it is unseen, sorry, it is an unseen force which can heavily affect everything around. Yellow and black and pale and hectic red, pestilence-stricken multitudes. Here he goes on describing the leaves. You know, in in when, in sorry, in autumn, what what are the colors of the leaves? Because of course, the leaf when it is on the tree, it is green, but gradually as it falls down and wither what what are the colors that we see we have yellow black and sometimes the color becomes very pale and sometimes even red uh, as if there is kind of a disease that has stricken these leaves and left them uh, like this pestilence stricken Multitudes. Multitudes here is a reference to the leaves themselves. Multitudes of leaves, uh, as if they are stricken with disease. So the tree leaves are not described as colorful and beautiful, but rather as symbol of death and even disease. So from the beginning, our poet is establishing an atmosphere of death and illness. Uh, and this is what sometimes we feel in autumn because it is the time of the year in which uh, nature is preparing it itself for winter. O thou who charietest to their dark wintry bed. Again, here you see he's describing what the wind uh, is able to do. Other thing that the wind does, not only it uh, cause the leaves to fall down from trees, it also carries them it carries them far away to their dark wintry bed notice this description here dark wintry bed so when they are buried on the ground as if they are buried in their uh, and this is a place which is going to be uh, let's say uh, even more affected as winter comes because you know in winter we have heavy rains uh, snowing sometimes so uh, these leaves are going to be deeply buried in dark places underground. Chariotist here means as if the wind has a chariot. You know the chariot, it is a kind of vehicles. As if it has a chariot and it carries the wind, uh, sorry, the leaves with it. So here it says, uh, who chariot is to their dark wintry bed, the winged seeds where they lie cold and low each like a corpse within its grave. So is it only that uh, the wind destroy things, uh, carry the dead leaves only? No, it also has a benefit, which is something we have studied maybe in science, that it carries the seeds of plants. Some, some plants, they depend on the wind to carry their seeds. So they lie uh, underground and they wait for uh, the, uh, the, the rain in winter so they are feed sorry they are fed and nurtured till the spring comes but look at the simile here each each one of those seeds each one of them is like a corpse like a corpse look at the comparison here like a corpse within its grave so it is as if the the seeds are dead bodies and each one of them is placed in its own grave. Our speaker doesn't seem to be really hopeful and, and uh, uh, optimistic. He, he, rather, he, he, sorry, he rather prefers to be very sad about the, the place and the atmosphere. You, you see, I think maybe because it's autumn and autumn usually gives this impression of uh, sadness or melancholy. But we are going to see why he is sad. So each like a corpse within its grave. So you see here talking to the wind, he says, you carry the seeds as if you are the chariot down to the earth where they'll sleep all winter. They lie there cold and humble like dead bodies in their grave. And of course, we know that uh, after autumn, what happens uh, when winter comes and all the raining, uh, it, it feeds and nurtures the seeds. What happens in spring? Until, uh, until thine azure sister of the spring shall blow her clarion over the dreaming earth. 
So they, they wait until spring comes. And you notice here, he, he describes the wind which uh, blows in, in spring as the sister of the west wind. You see, so the west wind blows in autumn. We have also uh, another kind of winds which blow in spring. I think it's the, uh, I'm not sure, I think it's the north, north wind or something. So here, until your blue sister, the spring wind, blows her trumpet. So as if the spring, when it comes, it has a trumpet. This is a musical instrument, and I want you to notice the musical instruments in this poem. We have three musical instruments. I have to pay attention to each one of them. Here we have this one, the trumpet. So as if the spring has a trumpet and it blows, when it comes, it blows. And when it blows this trumpet, what happens? It wakes up the earth. And this is what happens in spring. You notice, we, we all know that spring is a season uh, in which life comes back to earth. Uh, nature is revived in spring. Everything comes back again to life. Then she brings out the buds. They are the, uh, like flocks of sheep. They feed in the open air. This is what basically happens in, in, uh, in spring. You see her clarion. Here clarion is, a, uh, this is what we mean here by trumpet, clarion. This is a musical instrument. Uh, usually it is blown. يعني من الآلات الموسيقية النفخية. يعني ينفخ فيها وتصدر أصوات. Uh, okay, and uh, so here, driving sweet butts like flocks to feed in air with living hues and odors, plain and hill. So life in nature is uh, revived again in, in spring. This is what happens after uh, the blue, let's say, uh, winds of spring blows again. Wild spirit, which art moving everywhere, destroyer and preserver, here or here. So again, he is referring to the wind as if it is a spirit, as if it has uh, human, let's say, or the qualities of living beings, uh, which is moving, which is everywhere, which is inf uh, affecting and influencing everything around. Destroyer and preserver. And this is here. This is the example of paradox, as the uh, as you remember the question that I've given you, asking you define paradox as a literary device. Here, the poet in this line here he uses, especially here when he describes the wind as what destroyer and the preserver. How it is a destroyer because with its force it can. Uh, destroy trees, let's say, uh, destroy life in nature. But at the same time, uh, this destruction, with this destruction, it carries the seeds uh, of plants to further places so that uh, they can grow again in spring. So it destroys certain aspects of life, but at the same time, it preserves. So this is a paradox. And what we mean by paradox, apparently most of you have copied the answers. Uh, it means uh, that two things which appear to be opposite or contradictory on the surface, but upon examining them closely, you realize that they are not contradictory. You see, يعني تناقض ظاهري يكون عادة. Uh, so destroyer and preserver here or here so the poet has something to say he wants the, the wind to listen to him so is he going to ask for something or is he going to say something important to the wind let's see this is what we are going to see in the next stanza which is the last one here is the last we have approximately three or four this is the last one so what does he want from the wind? Notice here, make me thy lyre, even as the forest is. Make me thy lyre. So, uh, lyre, you know this musical instrument? Again, we have another musical instrument here, which is the lyre. Uh, 
طبعا هي اكو اشكال من عدها القيثاره اكو نوع اللي هو يعزف فقط اذا جت عليه خلينا نقول الرياح يعني يوضع في مكان ممكن توصل الى الريح وبالتالي لما تضرب الاوتار يطلع موسيقى so uh, here the poet wants to become a liar which which is placed in the face of the wind so that the wind when it comes it can uh, give him the ability to play or to produce music and you see the poet of course he's not going to produce music literally he is a poet so what is the thing which he produces it is poetry words but he's asking the wind to give him the force to do that to give him the power the ability even as the forest is what if my leaves are falling like its own what if my ability notice here he wonders what if he loses his ability as a poet like a forest losing its leaves you see he's comparing himself to the falling leaves of the trees in the forest what if i lose my leaves my abilities my words just like uh, a forest is losing its uh, green leaves its life you see the tumult of thy mighty harmonies will take from both a deep autumnal tone sweet though in sadness so who's going to bring life again to to the forest and to the poet both both of them see bring beautiful he's asking the wind to bring beautiful notes whether uh, see here we have contradiction sweet though in sadness a mixture of contradictory feelings here from us both me and the forest he's asking the wind to bring life to them again both he and the forest be thou spirit fierce again he's calling the wind spirit be my spirit you see he wants to become one with the wind he wants to be unified with the wind why because he believes that this wind can give him the ability uh, even if he loses his ability to write poetry it is the wind which is going to give him this ability back uh, because this fierce and powerful uh, spirit that the wind has can also uh, let's say inspire the the poet and give him the power to write all the time be thou me impetuous one he wants to become one with it drive my dead thoughts over the universe see scatter my dead thoughts across the universe like falling leaves so as you carry the dead leaves i want you to carry my dead thoughts also with you i don't want these dead thoughts in my head carry them over the universe like withered leaves to quicken a new birth why he would like that the wind takes the fallen leaves or the dead thoughts that he has because uh, sometimes birth or uh, let's say a new birth needs before that death or destruction sometimes uh, let's say uh, birth doesn't come unless there is a destruction before that unless the, the, it is death before this birth this is the cycle of life of nature death comes after uh, let's say uh, after life comes death and after death comes life again this is this is what happens in nature this is what we see in nature this cycle of seasons uh, death in autumn and in winter and then life comes again in spring and summer and so on this is this cycle of life and death this happens in nature so the poet is asking the uh, the wind to take the dead thoughts that he has so that after that he is waiting for a new birth you see a new birth and by the incantation of this verse scatter as from an unextinguished hearth ashes and sparks my words scatter my words among mankind you see so what is what is this thing that he 
wants uh, the wind to do for him. Let this poem be a prayer that scatters ashes and sparks as though from a fire that someone forgot to put out throughout the human race. He wants his poetry, his words to be heard by all mankind. I want everyone to listen to my words. You see, the poet, what is the thing which gives power uh, to the poet? It is his ability all the time to write poetry, to speak about his own thoughts and feelings, to enhance, uh, let's say, or to inspire people, to encourage them, to make change, to, to influence people. How can he influence people if he loses his ability to use words? So if he, if he loses that, where does the... Uh, or, or what can help him to gain back that force or ability it is the wind or let's say nature and you notice here how this is a romantic poet who believes that nature can give him life and power and can help him in order to change society in order to create some influence on on mankind on people through his poetry uh, he believes, the poet here believes that if he becomes one with nature, nature is going to give him the power he needs in order to, to keep writing poetry, to keep producing music and poetry and do something which can influence people and mankind. Be through my lips to unknown, uh, sorry, unawakened earth, the trumpet of a prophecy, the trumpet of a prophecy. I, I mean, sometimes... Uh, the romantic poets believe that the, the poet also has the same role as a prophet. They even uh, believe this. Yani, uh, so as if here, uh, the trumpet of a prophecy, as if the, the poet ha uh, believes he has a kind of a prophecy that he wants to preach to people. Okay, uh, now let's see the last line. Oh wind, if winter comes, can spring be far behind? And you see the question here, the poem ends with a question, but does this mean that the poet is uh, uh, seeking an answer? I don't think so. It is a rhetorical question and you are familiar with such questions in which the poet asks about something in order to emphasize or maybe to raise a certain point, but he is not really after an answer. Okay, this is not, a, a, let's say, um, a normal question. This is a rhetorical question, but let's see what is this point that he is trying to focus here on. If winter comes, can spring be far behind? So he's asking, is there really a kind of life which is coming after this death? Is there a hope that uh, I'm not going to lose my force, my ability uh, as a poet? You see, so this is just a rhetorical question. We can say that somehow the poem ends with a hopeful note. So here, uh, as you see, this is in brief let's say the uh, explanation of ode to the west wind in your hand out يعني عندكم بالملزمه راح تشوفون بالشرح ايضا اكو بعض النقاط اللي تخص الثيمز الاساسيه الموجوده بالقصيده اللي هي تتعلق بالانسان والطبيعه man and nature uh, let's say transformation the ability to transform uh, let's say uh, from the state of death into the state of life and rebirth. In case you have any questions concerning the poem, you can ask me at any time. See you next time.